All right, um, welcome to my presentation today. I hope you enjoyed all your break, but now we're back to business. Um, I'm going to talk about website localization. What is localization? Why is it important? And what opportunities are in it for you guys? Let's have a look and get started. First of all, I want to start with a couple of really interesting facts. Facts that speak for themselves and facts that basically show you where I'm coming from. Did you know that it would take over 7,000 languages to reach the whole world population, but it only takes 83 languages to reach 83% of it? Did you know that 75% of global consumers prefer to buy from websites that are in their own language? I guess that's not really a surprise considering our own search behavior. 55% of web content is in English, but only 28% of the online population are English speakers. And that's exactly where we come in and where localization comes in. 56.2% of consumers say the ability to obtain information in their own language is more important than price. That's great news for you guys, because if you're promoting a really high-priced product, then if you provide the information users are after, targeted and localized, then they will be happy to pay the price. So you, all you need to do is to just draw them into the funnel. Content that is locally targeted has six times more engagement than posts that were designed for the global market. Again, it shows you how important localization is. Also, people are twice as likely to uh, stay as long twice as likely on a website um, if, language, uh, if the content is in their language. A really good example is Apple. Of course, they do have the deep pockets, but Apple has 108 localized and country-specific websites very adapted to the local market. So if you're interested in localization, have a look at their sites as well. So what is localization and why is it important? Website localization is the process of adapting an existing website to local language and culture in the target market. You want to adapt in a linguistic and cultural context, and that is much more than translations. At a later slide, I will show you like a checklist um, of things you have to do to get localization right. So we will go more into detail. Why details matter? I came up with a couple of like examples. But the most important one for me from an affiliate perspective is, for example, currency. I've seen lots of affiliates outsourcing their translations, for example. And lots of translators probably just translate one-to-one -one if you don't really tell them specifically you want it to be localized. So I've seen the euro sign very often on the left-hand side, which just makes my skin scroll. So I really uh, recommend you that when you do that to make sure that the euro is on the right. Another thing is pound versus kilogram. To be honest, I don't know how much five pound is in kilogram. So if you have your uh, product reviews, for example, for a weight loss product, ensure that this is also being converted to. So if you have a European country, let's say Germany, then make sure that everything is displayed in kilogram. Another example is Arabian. Arabic reads from the right to the left. This is not just about the content, it is about the whole website and how it is built. I will come into an example later point. Um, I've got one revelation to make here, which is uh, FenQ is actually going Arabic. It will be our very first site for the Arabian market. Um, we have translations back and we are currently basically working on it. So this year we're definitely going to try to tackle that market. And then another thing is text expansion. Most languages are much longer than English, so they just need to make sure on your website when you have, for example, call to action buttons, that they're dynamic so that the text also fits in. And then just a couple of other examples. And then I found a really good quote, which kind of sums everything up, and it's from a former German chancellor. And he said, if I'm selling to you, I speak your language. If I'm buying, dann müssen sie Deutsch sprechen. I think the main learning from that is that if you target a target market, a specific market, then you need to speak their language as well. I've come up with a couple of examples. Uh, first of all, I picked Nike. 
or Nike, um, which is a very global brand, of course, and you can see that they have localized, for example, their home pages as well. So on the left side here, you can see the Spanish side, which displays Atletico Madrid uh, players. And on the right hand side, this is the Argentina version, and they've got a very successful basketball team. So they have been displaying that. Nike is really good in adapting to local events as well. So if there would be, for example, a World Cup or the Olympic Games or whatever, if you browse through all the countries, you will always see that they have adapted that to something which is relevant to the target market. Another example for localization is Coca-Cola. I'm going to come out. I don't think you can see that, but here on this one, this is the Canadian version, and you can see on the sides uh, maple um, leaves. Um, you can also see on the right uh, on the right hand side that Coca-Cola has, for example, teamed up with a charity to uh, preserve water reserves, which means it's very very localized um, because this is obviously all relevant towards the Canadian market. Then you've got the Arabic website in the middle. Really important here if you compare it to Canada, for example, you can see that the home page button is actually on the right because, like I said, it goes from right to left. So everything needs to change. If you look at the magnifying glass, it's actually on the left, like over there, it's on the right. So there are a lot of like website features that basically need to be adapted. And then on the left-hand side as well, same as the Arabic one, you can see the imagery. It's all very uh, targeted with like specific clothing and the ethnicity as well. So they do a good job. And this one is one for affiliates, I would say. It's a really quick win, and this is about seasonality here. So on the left-hand side, you can see Portugal. Obviously, at the moment, it's summer. They promote their uh, summer uh, products as well. You have the beach, you've got the sand. It's all basically targeted. On the right-hand side, you see a lady with a woolly hat. Uh, you can see winter skincare tips. This is actually New Zealand because this is what they have at the moment. So this is something affiliates could also, like affiliates you guys, um, can take on board. Because if you have, for example, let's say weight loss products, Right now, they might be really in because they're actually working towards a beach body season later down the line. So this is like really small little tricks you can take, really, to make more profit. So it's localization for you. If you want to compete in a less competitive market and want to engage customers effectively, then the answer is yes. If you want to strengthen your brand globally and want to increase your affiliate income, which I assume everyone here wants, then the answer is yes. If you want to increase time on site and build credibility and trust, then don't look any further. Let's look at opportunities. These are the stats from the World Bank, uh, end of 2015. And these are the biggest economies. Of course, no surprise, US is miles ahead. But then we've got China, Japan, and Germany, followed by the UK, France, India, Italy, Brazil, and Canada. So this gives you just a really good idea where it is worth it to, to trade to and to sell to. Fastest growing economies are China, Brazil, and Mexico, and India. So obviously, each of those markets had their own challenges. Um, what I would recommend you guys to do is that once you have done your research and you have picked a specific country you want to target, speak to your affiliate specialists. Have a chat to them, see if the merchants have the shipping right, if the payment methods are in place, and make sure that from that point of view everything is like sorted as well. So we're basically on the same line, and uh, it's worth it to basically get into that localization project. This is from Statista. Uh, it's basic number of internet uh, users as well, in millions. Um, so here again, you can see as well, where do people, where do they shop online? I mean, we are all about online business. So this is also really important when you do your research. So best practices for global reach and return on investment. First of all, like I said, you need to research your countries that give you the best return. You need to pick languages that matter most. Think about English, Spanish, Portuguese. French, Italian, of course, Arabic as well, and Chinese. And then choose domains. Um, again, you can speak to your affiliate specialists about it. We've got lots of multilingual people here. Um, or if you have a trusted translator as well, they will also be able to assist. 
and of course plan for growth. Let's have a look at best localization practices. Personalization and localization kind of go hand in hand. So you need the data and of course the content to personalize. Really important is language. The culture of course, and you need to get the demographic right. The niche is very interesting and so are the interests. If you get all of that bundled together, then you are able to do really good personalization. What about content localization? You need to get the product and service info right. The terminology is really, really important. One of the things, it's a German example actually, for example, the translation for a card. The card, really often I've seen that they use it as Einkaufswagen, you guys will know. This is basically the trolley you use when you go shopping at Aldi. It just makes no sense. It's not, it's not terminology you would use online. It got to be Warenkorb. So these are really small little things which could decrease the trust of a visitor from the country. So you need to get that right. The same is about support and community. If you want to build forums and whatnot, you need to make sure that it's localized. I've got Coca-Cola on the bottom as an example. Basically, they all have those name tags on it. And they need to localize, or they have localized that, because obviously certain types of names, like uh, let's say Jean-Pierre or Jean-Philippe, that would be more likely be in France rather than maybe in the UK. So this is a part of localization, which seems trivial, but it's very important. So after talking about everything I have so far, I think it boils down to user experience. We are different. We think different, we speak different, and we expect different. We perceive different. So usability is our job. If we provide useful content and usable content that is accessible and valuable, then we can localization really make work and the return on investment will be fabulous. I've created this chart for you guys um, to make it as easy as possible and to kind of showcase what everything needs to be considered. So if we start with architecture, content and design, that needs to be planned out. You need to keep local customs in mind for languages you selected. Think about, for example, navigation, how you're going to display language, naviga uh, language navigations. Um, the next thing, of course, is international SEO strategy. You need to do keyword research in a specific language. The page, on-page optimization, very important. When you get landing pages translated, you need to make sure you get translated uh, meta titles and descriptions. You need to make sure that hreflang is in, uh, is in, uh, in space. So for the hreflang tag, you can use, for example, your um, plugin called WPML. And uh, for international SEO, I think definitely Yoast plugin, probably most of you know, uh, will be really, really important. Then translation new or new content. Of course, the translation will be important. If you don't do anything in terms of localization, start at least with translation and then do the localization afterwards. That is possible as well. And of course, including editing and proofreading, I will show you a practical example afterwards, what impact it actually can have. Then artwork localization. Think about imagery. It needs to be translated. You can use local imagery. And uh, the same is with multimedia. If you've got videos, think about I think, adding voiceovers or subtitles so that the target audience can understand and knows exactly what it's about. Or even think about creating local videos from scratch. Then the quality analyzers. This is basically an ongoing process. Tools such as Hotjar are fantastic for visitor feedback. So for Hotjar, I'm using it, for example, for site abandonment polls. If people want to leave, ask why. That feedback is absolutely vital in order to get everything right on your sites. Usability tests, been doing loads of those. Take ideally people that live in a country, get them onto your affiliate sites and basically ask them questions. Okay, where, where is the best, um, where's the best weight loss product on my site? Then you need to watch them. You need to look, how do they use your website? Do they find the information you want them to find? And, and just make sure that the whole usability it's been recorded and then you can basically, based on that feedback, work on your sites. And multilingual support, 
I actually wrote an article recently on Monish about that. A lot of you do email submission, so they've got their contact us page, you've got your contact form, and like users can contact you. Live chat, ooh, really, really important these days, and I think it is really common for affiliate sites. So, most of you are for hours per day working on their sites and working on their affiliate campaigns. So why don't you just install it? And even if you just offer it for like four or five hours a day, at least then you already capture them and uh, can basically support your customers and hopefully when they have questions, turn them into buyers. A really big one is split testing. Who's doing split tests here? Anyone? Okay. Um, it's not as many as I would like. Um, A-B tests, personalization tests, are very, very important in order to improve all your performances. And last thing, work close with merchants, especially here at Moniche, we've got very strong relationships to, to you. And um, I want you to request localized resources. If you feel it's not there, things are missing, get in touch. If you know the market really, really well, and you say that payment method is missing, you've got spelling mistakes there, the headline is rubbish, whatever it is, I don't want you to be quiet, I want you to reach out to us because it's in our interest and in your interest that we get it right on both sides. So definitely talk to us, we are very approachable. Okay, A-B testing. Been doing tons of that. Where user testing allows you to form ideas, like with usability tests, for example. A-B tests allow you to validate those ideas on real user interaction. One example is, for example, here. It's the same site design with a green call to action button and a red call to action button. What happens is, when we have set it up, we basically split the traffic. So 50% see the green button, 50% see the red button. And then based on the goals we have, for us, for example, it's mainly revenue, and other micro conversions, whilst for you it probably would be the usage of an affiliate link. It might be if you have lead captures, it might be how many leads you're going to get from the site, or if you have a specific CTA on your homepage, how this is performing, like the, the engagement, the clicks. Um, so you can test loads of it, and then obviously, based on the result, you can then implement. I'm using Visual Website Optimizer, which is a paid tool, uh, very good, but Google actually has a free tool called Google Optimize. So to start with, definitely recommend it. I want to give you some examples I've been doing for Germany and for France for Thank You. So Thank You France to start with. Uh, we tested improved copy. So the copy has been on the website for I think three years. I don't speak French. So I reached out to someone who is obviously native and knows the market and asked them to proofread. I wanted them to shorten the sentences to make the flow better in French. Uh, we had a couple of like English images still on our website, like money back guarantee, which is just no go. So this has been changed. So all the images, everything has been made in French basically. So only those small changes converted, the copy converted actually 1.05% better which meant it's an extra 20p per visitor over the course of the year if we continue to perform. So you can see it started off a little bit like wobbly, but then it always went better and better. So the blue line is basically a new copy. Thank you, Germany. Did the same thing. Um, just I was the copywriter, so it could go either way. Um, but we improved the copy, which means there were different things. I tried a different headline. I tried a different intro. Um, I made it flow better, the copy itself. And then one specific thing is, um, there's a reference in FenQ copy about uh, how to get a sexy body. So if everyone who knows FenQ knows it's quite medical, like it comes across as quite medical, it comes across as really like established and very serious. So I felt for the German market that reference to the sexy body might be not as suitable so I removed that and changed it with that they want to be healthier and like happier and just like that it tied in a little bit better because I guess most people who are overweight, they don't want a sexy body straight away. I think they just want to get healthy, thin and then probably get that sexy body with the work. So that was just the idea behind, again, like we test things. Like, I mean, sometimes I can be totally wrong and sometimes it can just be great. This copy converted 2.3% higher than the control and it extra uh, 51 per visitor over the course of the year. So if you think about your visitors and you want to have that extra revenue, just those small changes make a massive, massive impact. 
And that's why I can't stress enough about split testing. And if any one of you has any questions, Rui and me are here, and we're always happy to talk to you about that. So building long-term trust at a local level is definitely something I aim for to do for our merchant sites, and I hope that you're going to aim for that for your affiliate sites. It requires a combined effort across like a, lo a lot of different initiatives, like keyword content, the culture, and the local site, but it's definitely worth it. And I couldn't resist to show you epic fails of big brands who tried uh, to do localization and uh, just got it wrong with mistranslation. So General Motors had a campaign um, in, in the US saying every car has a high quality body, but the Belgium translation was every car has a high quality corpse. Big fail. We had a fizzy brand, beverage brand course. Uh, original slogan was turn it loose. And it was translated in Spanish, suffer from diarrhea. That didn't go too well. And then we've got KFC, original finger-licking good slogan. And in Chinese, it was, we will eat your fingers off. So that was not a success in China. And the best one, I think, is Pepsi. That was actually in 1970, so it's a bit old. But the original was, come alive, you're in the Pepsi generation. Very successful in the Western world. But in China, it was, Pepsi brings your ancestor back from the dead, which wasn't really... Uh, appreciated and rise from the grave with Pepsi in German. Yikes. I don't think I need to say anything about the Romanian tea. <laughs> so, yeah, it is fun. The world is waiting for you guys, so what are you waiting for? Have you got any questions? <laughs>